So what do you say we spend a little time in the garden today? All right, all right, all right. You know, when I was a kid, I just loved watching WCW wrestling. Used to come on TBS and we didn't have cable. Had to go over to my grandparents' house on Saturday nights to watch wrestling because they had cable. And there was this big, mean, bad guy named Big Van Vader. And uh, when he got ready to whoop up on somebody, he'd say, it's time, it's Vader time. And uh, that's kind of how I feel today. It's time, it's Tater time. So here we are the end of February down here in South Georgia. And it is tater planting time. It's finally dried up enough for us to get our Irish potatoes in the ground. I'm gonna be planting lots of different varieties today and I'll be sure to show you all those as we plant them. So planting the Irish potatoes, the ideal time to plant, no matter where you live, is two weeks before your average last frost date. Now down here, our last frost is usually early March. So the ideal time to plant is any time between February 14th and the uh, you know end of february early march you've got a window there to work with it's not like you got to plant them on a certain day now a lot of people down here insist on planting them on valentine's day other parts of the country have their own days they want to plant them on good friday or saint patrick's day and they kind of use those holidays as a way to remember when they need to plant their potatoes couldn't get them planted on Valentine's Day this year. It was just way too wet. And um, finally got our soil dried up here. We used a tarp to kind of keep it from getting any more rain. And I tilled it one time just to kind of help dry it out more. And we're ready to go today. So we've got us a 30 by 35 plot here. We're gonna fill this whole plot with Irish potatoes. I've already got my rows laid off here. I got either a mark or a stake at the end of each row. That's gonna help me keep everything kind of straight and equidistant. The soil is uh, pretty nice and workable. We had a good dense cover crop here in the fall and got that incorporated into the soil. A lot of organic matter there, nice workable soil. Wasn't always this way uh, with this plot here, but it has improved over the years with some cover cropping and additions of compost. I've got my rows spaced four feet apart this year. Now I've always done kind of three feet and uh, we used to do a lot of market farming around here and I was trying to maximize my space but I give myself a little more room this year went with um, four feet rows give me a little more soil in the middle to uh, heal those uh, potatoes with so four feet apart is going to give us eight rows in this plot here and we've got seven different varieties we're going to be planting so I made me a little planting map here in my little gardening notebook we got our eight rows here, and I got what I'm going to plant in each row. So the only variety I'm planting more than one row of would be this German Butterball here, which is my favorite. We got Red Norland, the first row, Viking, Irish Cobbler, Kennebec, Yukon Gold, French Fingerling, and those two rows of German Butterball. And I tried to lay this out in kind of order of how they're going to mature so with potatoes you have early maturing varieties mid maturing varieties and later maturing varieties and that way i can kind of dig these you know in sequence along the plot here and i'm not digging one in the middle and then one over here and one over here so i kind of dig them in this order that they're planted here so the red norland and viking those red potatoes will uh, be ready earlier. The Yukon Gold's more of a mid-maturing potato, and this German Butterball will be the last one that needs to be harvested. So about three days ago, I went ahead and cut up my seed potatoes into little pieces like this. And a lot of people wonder, do you have to cut them up? And you don't have to cut them up, but think about it this way. So if I plant a whole potato, I'm gonna have lots of sprouts coming off that whole potato. So I'm gonna get lots of sprouts or lots of plants in one centralized location right there. And what's gonna happen is you're just gonna get some overcrowding that's gonna happen over time and you're gonna end up making some small potatoes, just like anything in the garden. If we plant it too close together, our produce or our harvest usually ends up being smaller. You'll get more potatoes because you've got sprouts everywhere, but your potatoes will end up being smaller. So we cut them into little pieces like this so we only get a few sprouts per piece and that's gonna give us some larger potatoes, which is what we're going for here. So I cut these up with, you know, tried to, to get two, three, you know, 
eyes per piece. Some of these, there may be a few more than that. This also helps your seed potato stock go a lot further. And then what we wanna do is after we cut them, we wanna allow time for this wound right here to heal. It's a process called suberization. But basically all that means is time for this flesh right here to kind of heal over. And that's gonna protect this piece of potato from rotting when you put it in the soil. Um, you can plant them right after you cut them up if you've got some you know, dry conditions for the next few weeks. But it's a safe bet to let them heal over a little bit before you put them in the soil so they're less likely to rot. You can also coat them in stuff. Uh, we've used fir bark in the past. Some people use sulfur. Some people use lime. All that's really doing is just changing the pH on the surface here, and then that helps to prevent them from rotting as well. But in my opinion, just you know, letting them sit for a few days after cutting them, let them heal over, that usually works just fine. Now, if you cut them up and then all of a sudden you get some rain coming, or you can't plant them right when you wanted to, they'll be fine cut up for several weeks. So uh, no worries if you cut them up too early, they'll be fine. You just want to make sure you store your potatoes in a cool, dry, dark place while you're waiting to plant them. So what I did, these are the bags they come in. So what I did, I just came in, I cut them up, put the cut pieces in a bucket as I was cutting them, and then I just put them all back in these bags. That way they could have some good airflow. They're sitting underneath my pole barn where it's dark. So um, just kind of kept them nice and dry that way. And we can see we're starting to get some sprouts on these like you see right there and right there. When you plant these things, you don't want real, real long sprouts because what can happen is when you got them in the bag or whatever, they can break off and then you kind of lose that, that plant that would come from there. So a little sprout's good or a little eye like you can see there is good. A lot of times we don't want to plant potatoes that have these real, real long sprouts on them. Once we put them in the ground, they'll sprout pretty well. And the size, contrary to what some people believe, the size of the piece of seed potato has nothing to do with your eventual harvest. You know, they're just feeding off this starch in here, um, all that good stuff in that potato, so they can make roots and make this eventual plant. So once that root there kind of makes contact with the ground, it's not feeding off this seed potato piece anymore. And when you dig potatoes, you'll often find the seed potato piece is completely intact, although um, a bit mushy. So you don't need a massive piece of seed potato. I've seen people plant little bee slivers of them before and do just fine. So the size of the seed potato piece has nothing to do with your eventual harvest. So we got our rows laid off and the kind of traditional way to plant potatoes in a garden like this is to make a furrow in the soil, make a little trench there, lay your seed potatoes in it and then come back and cover it up. However, I was talking to a guy the other day and he mentioned this is a good idea if you have a garden that doesn't drain that well. Now, this particular plot is my highest plot of all 10 of my garden plots, so I'm not worried about it as much here but he mentioned what he does is he doesn't make a furrow at all he just lays the seed potato pieces on top of the soil and then comes and heals them there and that way they're not planted as deep and they're less likely to rot if you get some prolonged periods of rain so that's an idea for some of you out there if your garden area stays kind of wet so to make those furrows to put our potatoes in we're going to use our double wheel hoe here which we can put lots of different attachments on right now I have these plow set attachments on here. So we got a right plow and we got a left plow on here. The right plow always throws dirt to the right. So this is the right plow. It's going to throw dirt this way. This is the left plow. It's going to throw dirt or soil this way. And we mount them on here so they kind of meet in the middle like that. And that's going to kind of split the soil and make a nice little furrow for planting our potatoes. So let's do it. All right, we got our eight planting furrows made, somewhat straight considering we didn't use a string. Now let's get some spuds in the ground. So we're gonna start out here with our red Norlin, which is one of our early maturing potato varieties. This is your kind of standard red potato, what some people call new potatoes when you harvest them and eat them right out of the ground. 
and i like this variety a little better than the uh, red pontiac which you get at some of your feed and seed stores just seems to do better for us so when you're planting these potatoes you want to give this sprout the path of least resistance to emerge out of the soil so we'll always want to plant it with the cut side down so the sprout side up so it can get out of that soil start making some leaves and start growing as far as spacing goes you can put them six inches apart like this you're probably going to make smaller potatoes that way because you're going to get a little bit of overcrowding i like to go about eight to twelve inches apart i don't measure it out i just kind of eyeball it so about eight to twelve with these guys and i've got more seed potatoes cut up than what i'll need here so i'm going to kind of pick through some of the better ones and get these red norlands in the ground here in this row Row number two here is getting another red variety. This one is called Viking. This is one I haven't grown before. And judging by the seed potatoes, this makes a much bigger red potato. Some of these were absolutely huge. So this is supposed to be kind of an improved red potato variety. And um, I should have mentioned earlier, you'll see videos of some people coming along here and they're pretty good potato throwers. They can throw these things and just make them land square in the furrow like that right there right side up i'm not that great of a seed potato thrower so i stick them in you know kind of bend over and stick them in the ground but you want to make sure they're kind of seated in there good because when you come along here to rake them over cover these uh, potatoes or use a wheel hoe like we're going to do you don't want uh, that process kind of flipping over the potato so i like to kind of seat them in there good so they're not going anywhere and they're kind of staying where we put them Row three is getting this variety here called Irish Cobbler. This is another one I've not grown before. This is an old heirloom variety here, a white potato with brown skin on it. It's supposed to be a really, really good mashing potato. So looking forward to evaluating these guys and comparing them to those other varieties we've grown many years. And then we've got our monster here, which is this variety here called Kennebec. And you can see from the size of that cut potato piece there, these things are absolutely huge. And uh, this is a big white potato, good baking potato, good potato for making them uh, French fried potatoes. Mm. And uh, we grew this last year and it's just a good one. So we're definitely growing it again this year. I might could have cut that one up a little more, but we're just gonna stick that big puppy in the ground just like that maybe give these a little more room since they get so much bigger row five here is getting our most popular variety as far as the ones we sell on our website and this is the yukon gold people just love the way this one tastes it's easy to grow makes nice big potatoes and just really really good to eat you can't tell there because that's already healed over but it's got a nice yellow inside in it kind of got the butter baked into it so these got pretty big pieces on them too and uh, might give those a little more room. So this is a definite one to grow. If you're having a hard time deciding which variety to grow, like I said, Yukon is our most popular and we hear just great things about it. Everybody loves this variety. Row six is getting this fingerling variety called French fingerling. So these are kind of long skinny potatoes. And if you were to do a blind taste test of all these varieties, this one here very well might win out uh, by a strong margin. The chefs consider this probably one of the best eating potatoes out there. The inside's got some kind of red markings on them and these, when you roast them whole, are just absolutely delicious. So we grew these last year, really, really liked them. Definitely growing them again this year. And then the last variety I'm planting, the one that is getting two rows, and this year's potato plot as opposed to one row for all the other varieties is my personal favorite the german butterball and uh, this is the one that has the most yellow insides my favorite potato to eat it doesn't make the biggest potato of all these varieties we're growing you know they're about on average about that big around it's the best tasting potato in my opinion and that's why we're planting two rows of these guys all right all right all right we got all eight rows of them spuds stuck down in the furrow now that seems like a lot of taters and it is but i just like growing the dang things i just can't help myself but to plant a whole plot of them and once they're harvested we usually don't have any problem eating them all or getting rid of them and now for the easy part which is zipping up these furrows 
throwing some soil on top of those spuds we just stuck in the ground. Now you can do this with a garden rake and come along there and cover them up. But I prefer to do it the easy way. So I got my high arch wheel hoe here. So this is a little different model than the double wheel hoe we used earlier. But you can do the same thing as far as planting potatoes with bugs. So we got our same plow set we used earlier to make a furrow. We just switched the positions on them and now we have them in what we call the healing position. So we can heal or uh, make a mound there and cover up those potatoes. So now we have the right plow blade on the left side, the left plow blade on the right side, and we'll just straddle those spuds we just stuck in the ground, throw soil on top of them, zip them up. And that's all there is to it, folks. The great thing about potatoes is, is you can plant them anywhere, no matter how big or small your garden is. So you don't have to have an in-ground row garden like we have here to grow your own potatoes. A lot of our customers will grow them in five gallon buckets or those little fabric grow bags and do just fine with those. They don't take a lot of space. You know, you're only figuring about a square foot or so, maybe a little bit less per plant. So you can grow these things anywhere in containers, raised beds, in very small gardens and still be successful and have you a nice little harvest of fresh potatoes. Just remember that they don't like really hot temperatures. So as soon as things start getting hot in early summer, late spring, that's when the potatoes are toast and that's when they're ready to be harvested. So, you know, look up what your average last frost date is if you don't know it. Make sure you get these things in the ground in late winter, early spring, whenever that time is for you. And if you haven't purchased your seed potatoes yet, we still have some left. Not a lot left, but we still have some left of the varieties that I planted today. So you can head on over to our website at hosstools.com and grab you some of those before we run out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this video, check out these other two videos right here. I think you really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.